Hello biology students, today we're going to be comparing asexual and sexual reproduction which very much relates to what we've been learning, mitosis and meiosis. Let's get started. First we're going to talk about what asexual reproduction is and what the different types and examples are. So asexual reproduction is the process in which one single parent produces one or more identical offspring. We sometimes call these identical offspring clones. This is often seen in bacteria, and here we have a uh, protist example as well, um, where an amoeba is just making a copy of itself through mitosis. So to better understand this making clones from a single parent, we're going to go through a couple of different examples that you should jot down. Our first example is just what we've learned about, mitosis, which is the way we make new body cells. But if I'm a single-celled organism, such as a, um, a protist, like amoeba, which is a single-celled eukaryote, this is how I would make clones or babies. All right, so paramecium or amoeba just dividing and making an identical copy of itself, that's how it reproduces, just through mitosis. Our next thing is called binary fission. This is how prokaryotic cells do their version of what we kind of know as mitosis. Well, prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, so they can't really do mitosis, which was all about DNA breaking through the nucleus as the nuclear membrane goes away. So they have a whole different process called binary fission. For our purposes, you just need to know that this is called binary fission. In IB Biology, you'd learn all of the details. All right, so it's just the equal division of the DNA and the cytoplasm in bacterial type cells. And that's how they make clones of each other or asexual reproduction. So um, if I am a fungus, though, I am not going to do either of those two things. I actually make spores called sporulation. And we often see this um, through things like bread mold and such. We're not going to learn the details of this one either. You can learn it in IB Biology. But it's a similar process where they're making clones of one another. A really cool one we sometimes see with plants is vegetative propagation, which means the plant will oftentimes make an identical clone of itself. So here we have the spider plant, and the spider plant actually makes baby spider plants at the very ends. And if you just pluck off this end of this piece, it'll actually grow to be an identical, genetically identical to the mother plant. All right, so again, remember, all of these are asexual. They're all making genetically identical clones. Um, same thing with a potato. Potato, when we think about its roots coming off, it can make genetical clones that way. Um, here's a way animals, and only some types of animals, can do um, the process of making clones. Some animals have this cool ability to regenerate. Um, they tend to be very simple organisms because regenerating complex things like for mammals is not really going to happen. So they end up being planaria, which are these flat worms. If I cut the planaria into pieces, so here there's a chunk of just the head regenerating a whole new identical organism. A chunk of the middle piece of the body regenerating a whole new organism. We can see the head reforming and the tail reforming. And this end piece, and even if I have all three separate chunks, I would end up getting three identical new organisms. And that's pretty wild. Um, we do this in science to learn, but we also have to wonder how ethical it is because it probably does hurt the organism. Um, similarly, if we cut worms or sea stars, they can do the same process. It's important to note not all animals can do this. It's not like it doesn't hurt them. It is an adaptation that allows them to make clones of themselves through this process. Lastly, some organisms can do the process of budding, which is the unequal division of DNA, but uh, the equal division of the DNA, but the unequal division of the cytoplasm. Here we can see yeast, like we used for our bread baking project, beginning to look like almost uh, bowling cones, and we um, can see this little top piece being smaller, that unequal component of the cytoplasm, beginning to form an identical clone to its bigger parent piece. We can see some other pieces forming here from previous buddings. 
So what ends up happening is that identical clone almost begins to form off the side of the mother component. This can happen in some simple creatures, even simpler than sea stars. And um, we can think of this as something that happens in sponges. I believe they also make fun of this in SpongeBob, um, but it's not really common. So here we can see a baby identical version forming of the mother one right here that will eventually pop off. So that's asexual reproduction. It's always an identical clone. This is compared to sexual reproduction that's always going to involve an egg and a sperm, a male and female gamete forming together. This happens in the following different kingdoms. Protists are single-celled eukaryotes, fungi, plants, and animals. Notice that bacteria are not listed here. They do not do sexual reproduction. Okay, so again, this is related to what we were learning mostly about meiosis, since it's about egg and sperm, which is the formation of um, the process of meiosis. So again, let's do some reviewing of things we've talked about in meiosis through sexual reproduction, those two types of gametes, the egg and the sperm, they'll unite. That process of uniting is called fertilization when the egg and sperm come together. So over this era, we could write fertilization. And the cell that's fertilized that is now diploid, because these two were haploid, we call this new cell that has the full number again, a zygote, which is quite the funny word but an important vocab word for us. So um, in comparison to asexual reproduction, our new offspring is not exactly the same or identical to the parent, either parents. There are a unique mix of the characteristics from both parents. This is pretty cool because it's very different than asexual reproduction and it has some benefits because that variation that we see amongst siblings and in a whole population might make for a better chance of survival. So let's say the environment changes for these beetles and the environment is all a green background like this. This green beetle will be able to hide best from predators because it'll be camouflage. But let's say the greenery dies off because of some drought and the stuff is more brown, this beetle will end up having a bigger advantage of being able to be camouflaged and this one will start to show like a sore thumb. So having the advantage of having differences in the population allows the whole population more likely to survive in the long run. We will learn more about how variation is important throughout the rest of the year. Great job guys, you made it!